Another thing to notice here is notice that electric field lines tend to start on positive charges and they tend to end on negative charges. Or a positive charge starts, an electric field line starts on a positive charge or at infinity, mm -hmm. as in this case. And an electric field line ends at a negative charge or it ends at infinity. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the, the starting point for an electric field line is either a positive charge, source charge or at infinity and the ending point is a negative charge or at infinity. And again, you can see why the further away the uh, electric field lines are from each other, the weaker the electric field is going to be. The, pod, the electric field lines here are starting on this source charge, and then they're moving towards infinity. Well, the closer they get to infinity, the further uh, away they are from the source charge, so the smaller you would effect, expect the electric field to be, which is also indicated by the fact that the electric field lines are farther from each other. Another point that's worth memorizing about electric field lines is they never cross. So you would never have two electric field lines that suddenly cross each other. I think there are one or two questions about that on last week's homework. Yeah. Once again, remember that the number of electric field lines that we draw is a little bit arbitrary. I've only drawn four electric field lines here, but there's really an infinite number. But once you, decide, once you pick a certain number of electric field lines to draw for one charge, then the number of electric field lines you draw for other charges should be proportional to the first case. So for example, suppose that this represented a positive one Coulomb test charge. Well now, let's say that this represents a positive two Coulomb test charge. Well, if I decided to draw four electric field lines here, how many electric field lines should I draw here? That's right, that's right. That's what it means to be proportional. Um, if we double the charge, we should double the number of electric field lines that we draw. Here's four, and then we can draw four more. And of course, we want to show that they're all pointing away from the positive source charge. So the number of electric field lines that you draw is proportional to the charge. Now the number of electric field lines you draw for your first picture is arbitrary. But once you've picked a number of electric field lines, then your other pictures have to be consistent with that. If I've decided to draw four lines when there's a plus one charge, then when I double the charge, I have to draw eight lines. If I felt like it, I could have drawn eight lines over here. If I had drawn eight lines here, I would have to draw 16 lines over here. So again, this is a little confusing to me. Because in reality, there's an infinite number of electric field lines in every picture, but we're only going to draw a finite number of them. And the finite number that we draw is proportional to the charge. Okay. Like I said, you don't have to draw four here. You can draw eight here, but then you'd have to draw 16 over here. Mm -hmm. So in order for this picture to be consistent with these two, this would have to be a negative one Coulomb charge to be consistent with this positive one Coulomb charge here to have the same number. Notice that even though I've doubled the number of electric field lines, they still are closer where the electric field is stronger, and they're further apart from each other where the electric field is weaker. And in general, would you expect the electric field in this picture to be stronger or weaker than the electric field in this picture? Should this electric field be stronger or weaker? Because there's a bigger source charge. And you can see that's represented in the fact that the electric field lines are always closer to each other. So if we compare the same two distances from the source charge, the electric field lines are more crowded in this picture than in this picture, which represents what we already knew, the electric field must be stronger here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be drawing surfaces around the source charges, and then we're going to be counting how many electric field lines go through that surface, because we're trying to work up to the concept of electric flux. So we have to think about putting the surface around the positive or negative charges.
Okay, so here we have another source charge, and now I've drawn a surface around that source charge. And what we're going to be concerned with is closed surfaces. A closed surface is one that has an inside and an outside, which means that you can't get from the inside to the outside without passing through the surface, which means that the surfaces have to be three-dimensional. So this is not supposed to represent just a circle. This is supposed to represent a three-dimensional surface. So you should imagine that the surface is also extending out of the blackboard and behind the blackboard. So now I don't know, what did I draw here? A kind of irregular egg-shaped surface. So we have a kind of three-dimensional surface. Uh, it has to extend in three dimensions, otherwise you could get out of it without passing through the surface. But we're only going to draw the two-dimensional cross-section. And then what we want to be focusing on is the amount of electric field lines that are passing through the surface. And what we're going to try to show is that the amount of electric field that exits a surface only depends on how much charge is enclosed in the surface. The amount of electric field that gets out depends on how much charge is enclosed inside the surface. Um, so for example, here we have a positive 1 Coulomb source charge. And how many electric field lines are getting out? Well, one, two, three, four. So there's four lines getting out. Now let me draw another surface. Here's another bigger surface. But notice it has the same amount of enclosed charge, so it also has the, no the same number of field lines getting out. This bigger surface still has four field lines getting out, and it turns out that has to be the case because it has the same amount of enclosed charge. The amount of electric field lines that get out of the surface only depends on um, how much charge is enclosed. Or let's look at another example. Let's think about how much electric field lines are getting into or getting out of here. One thing to notice is that this is enclosing zero charge. So let's see how much electric field is getting in or out. Well, now we have to introduce a new idea. When an electric field line exits, we consider that positive. But when an electric field line goes in, we consider that negative. So here we have a positive flux, as we'll use that concept in a second, where the electric field line gets out. But that's going to be canceled by this negative flux over here. And here we have a positive flux that's going to be canceled by this negative flux. So if we add up all those positives and negatives, what's the total amount of electric field that's exiting here? Well, zero, because all the positives cancel out all the negatives. And that also, again, is in accord with what we had said earlier. The amount of electric field that exits a surface depends only on the amount of, only on the amount of source charges enclosed in that surface. Well, that means that if you're not enclosing any charge, you can't have any electric field lines exiting you, or you can't have any net exit. We do have some electric field lines exiting here, but they're canceled by the electric field lines that are coming in. Notice that there, um, there is a source charge here, but this source charge is outside of this closed surface. Mm -hmm. So any, um, and now you can kind of see why all that matters is the charge that's enclosed in the surface. It, it's simple here, because with only one charge, every electric field line starts on this charge and goes off towards infinity. So if the, electric, if the surface is around this charge, eventually the electric field line is going to escape from it. Whereas here, any, uh, since this is an electric field line that's coming from an outside source, well, it might enter the surface, but eventually it's going to exit on its way to infinity. Suppose that we turned this now into a positive 2 Coulomb source charge. Well, then we'd have to double the amount of electric field lines, right? To be consistent with what we talked about earlier. So how, now how many electric field lines on net are exiting from this surface? Well, eight. And how many electric field lines are exiting from this surface? Eight. Why is it increased? Because they now are enclosing more charge. The more charge you're enclosing, the more electric field lines that are going to escape. Um, but what's happened over here to the net number of electric field lines? Well, nothing. There is one more electric field line that's escaping, but it's going to be canceled by one more electric field line that's coming in. We haven't changed the amount of electric charge that's inside the surface, so we're not changing the net amount of electric field coming in and out. 